Donald Trump no longer facing any primary opposition. The focus tonight is on the Democrats' ongoing contest and the general election battle ahead. The focus on West Virginia. The Clinton campaign believes they will lose that state. A bit ironic, eight years ago, she won that state over Barack Obama by some 40 points. Let's assume Bernie Sanders wins West Virginia tonight 60-40, right? Remember, 301. If he wins 60-40 because of the number of delegates at stake, it's a net gain of only five delegates. That's the problem for Bernie Sanders right now. It's the same rules that have kept him competitive. The proportionality of the Democratic rules make it hard for him to catch up right now. Well, Trump easily wins without any opposition the uh, Republican presidential primary in West Virginia. The fact that West Virginia is, is Trump territory is really a, a perfect illustration of the kind of voter that he appealed to so successfully. Bernie Sanders is the winner. A lot of Clinton supporters say, get out. Bernie Sanders supporters are energized. It's called the Daytona 500 for a reason. Uh, let him, you know, he has every right to stay in the race because he still has a possibility. Right, still but it's really hard to see. He has to win 66% of the remaining pledged delegates just to catch her, right. to beat her by one. Uh, it's very unlikely, but it's a crazy right. year. Let's play on. Hi, I'm Carl Azus. Thank you for watching. We start with a quick update on the U.S. presidential nomination process. Voters in Nebraska and West Virginia went to the polls earlier this week to help nominate a Republican candidate for president. Businessman Donald Trump is now running unopposed. He won both states and he is now 90 delegates away from the 1,237 he'll need to clinch the Republican nomination for president. He is expected to do that and become the party's nominee. For the Democrats, even though former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton is still in the lead, it was her challenger, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, who won in West Virginia Tuesday. Nebraska had its Democratic vote back in March. So as of right now, former Secretary Clinton has 1,719 pledged delegates and 516 superdelegates. Senator Sanders has 1,425 pledged delegates and 41 superdelegates. A Democrat needs 2,383 delegates to win the party nomination. Most of the lawmakers in Brazil's Senate said they plan to vote to move forward with impeachment proceedings against Brazil's president. Teachers, you can find the results of that vote at CNN.com. This does not mean that Brazilian leader Dilma Rousseff has been removed from power. If a simple majority of the Senate votes in favor of impeachment proceedings, it means she has to leave the presidential palace for 180 days and defend herself in a trial. Rousseff says she'll fight with every means possible to finish out her term, which is scheduled to end in 2018. Brazil is the largest and most populated country in South America. It's the continent's largest economy. It's a regional leader. Because of all that and the challenges it faces as it prepares to host the Summer Olympics, officials around the world are watching. Dilma Rousseff is one of the most unpopular presidents in Brazil's history, possibly in the world. So what happened after she was re-elected in October 2014? Well, to start with, the economy is tanking. Many call it a depression, high unemployment, high inflation. And that means a lot of Brazilians, frankly, aren't in the mood to put up with political corruption. Investigators had already started to reveal a bribery scandal involving the state-run oil company Petrobras before Rousseff's re-election. But it snowballed afterwards with accusations against top business leaders and politicians in Rousseff's Workers' Party. That meant that while Rousseff herself wasn't implicated, millions of Brazilians have taken to the street and with public opinion in their favor, opposition lawmakers decided to forge ahead with an impeachment motion in Congress, accusing Rousseff not of corruption, but of breaking budget laws to try and hide the sorry state of the economy ahead of re-election. Now the impeachment proceedings will drag on for months. All of this, however, is going to play out on the global stage as Brazil gears up for the Olympic Games in August. The Zika virus, which can cause birth defects in the unborn babies of pregnant women, is spreading in Brazil and throughout South and Central America. It's mainly transmitted by bites from certain types of mosquitoes. And as the weather and the mosquito season heat up, health officials are concerned the virus could make an impact in the U.S. They've been recommending wearing long sleeves and pants and using insect repellent whenever we go outside. And there are some extra steps we can take just outside our doorsteps.
Mosquitoes grow in water. That's how they hatch. The female mosquito puts the eggs in the water, and three to seven days later, after a number of changes, a real mosquito flies out to bite you. You get rid of the water, you get rid of the mosquitoes. You get rid of the next batch, the next hatch of mosquitoes. So look for bottle caps or solo cups or bird baths or dog dishes or kiddie pools or tires in your yard. Even English ivy can make its own problems with this little cup of water that it holds. If it holds it long enough, it can be a breeding ground for more mosquitoes. So if you eliminate the water, you eliminate the hatch, you break the cycle, and you reduce the population of mosquitoes in your area. If you're not making one request on each day's transcript page at cnnstudentnews.com, you're missing your chance to be on the roll call. Columbia Falls Junior High is here today. It's from Columbia Falls, Montana, and we welcome the Wildcats. Colmer Middle School is in Mississippi, the city of Pasagoula. Watch out for the Panthers while you're there. And not too far from the Gulf of Riga, it's great to see the International School of Latvia is watching in the community of Pinky. Paula Clausen couldn't accept what she saw just outside Tijuana, Mexico. Lean-tos, where some people are living, were blown right over by high winds. Rats, tarantulas, and scorpions could walk right into some of the makeshift homes there. This is according to Project Mercy, a nonprofit that Clausen founded in 1991. It's changing lives in the region one house at a time. San Diego is one of the wealthiest cities in the States. But just right across the border, it's a different world. On the outskirts of Tijuana, there is no running water, no sewage system. The floors are dirt and vermin crawl under the walls. It's hard for Americans to imagine. 25 years ago, I went just to donate clothes, and I was shocked. I knew I had to do something to try to help them. I started an organization that builds homes for people in need, free of charge. Hola. Se goteó todo. All the water comes through and wets the bed. No tiene puerta. Es muy inseguro. Es bien difícil vivir así. This is so dangerous, all these wires. In order to receive a house, we require that families work in the construction of a house for their neighbors. Volunteers from California come down to build. They come away with a totally different attitude. It creates a bond. We have developed a house that is sturdy, which can be built in one day. Muchas gracias. No más frío, no más lluvias. Es más seguros. These are our neighbors. To see the joy and the relief on their faces, that gives me the energy to continue. One thing you'll notice about this hiker on Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania is the odd shape of the backpack. You could fit a pizza in there, and they did. This was a publicity stunt that won Pizza Hut the Guinness World Record for highest elevation pizza delivery, 19,347 feet up. Pizza Hut says it used an airplane, a motor vehicle, and a relay of professional hikers to deliver the pizza. It took three days, and even with a battery-heated backpack, we're not sure how fresh the pepperoni and extra cheese pie tasted. In terms of flavor, it might not have mountained too much, but in terms of experience, it was at the summit. We just hope they tip the driver and the pilot and the hikers, because after that mountain of effort, a little extra dough is always in good taste. I'm Carl Azus, and we'll deliver more news and puns tomorrow.